In worship, we, your people, acknowledge your Son as King, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Shall we rise for the opening hymn? Gutierrez to open in a word of prayer for us. Glad in it, saints. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Lord, that we could gather in your presence once again. The one who redeemed us by his own blood. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, for your love for us. No greater love than this that a man should, that a man should die for his friends. So, Lord, we are thankful, Lord, that we could be here in your presence. We pray, O oh God, that whatever is said and done this day, Lord, that the saints will be glor that the saints will be encouraged, and Lord, that you will be glorified. Bless your man servant, Lord, as you come and bring a word for us, a word of encouragement and love, Lord, from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And welcome, welcome once again to Open Door Believer Chapel. We remind you each week that we are a Plymouth Brethren Assembly. We are not a pastor-centered church. We are governed by a body of local elders, and our chief purpose here is to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whom to know is eternal life. In preparation for the message today, our scripture reading is taken from 1 Samuel 8, 1 to 10, and 19 to 20, and it will be read for us by Jonathan Williams. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah, and they served at Beersheba. But his sons did not follow in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now, appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, give us a king, this greatly displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt, until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know that the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations, with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. This is the word of the Lord. Ah, uh, today, in worship, we gratefully honor Christ the King. 
who, unlike any king before or after him, gave himself for his subjects. Other people, other kings, their subjects die for them. Our king gave himself for us, for us who took pleasure in hating him. What a king. Shall we worship? What a king. Worship the king.
we'll turn our thoughts to the bottom of the page where we have our congregational declaration. Today is taken from 1 Timothy. It's the most important aspect of our service. Although we can't hear each other, let's give it a good try together. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason, I obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now, to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the God alone whose honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to the Lord. Behold his king so innocent, a crown of thorns upon his head, feel his heart, his heart of grace. Behold his hand of suffering, who wore the cross and all.
today, our speaker is our brother, Elder Fernando Williams. Now, Fernando tells me he's a hunter. Huh? Come beside me, is that right? No, he said he say he's a hunter. Have a gun and they go hunt. I think the man go a bush. The man say he drive by the roadside and if him see an animal, let him shoot it. What kind of modern day hunting this? Or ask how much a pong. Or, or we ask them how much a pong. So you, oh, you know, buy it. You, you look out for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> earlier we had a Lord's Supper and my wife told me not to take long. But then the generator start up, so I guess I could wait until the fuel finish. Uh, it's always a blessing. You know, I know a lot of churches, they're not even having service today. But it's always a blessing when we can, you know, gather together as God's children. You know, as Brother Dickie mentioned, I grew up in bush. I never had running water. I used to have to full water at a well. When my father came home, he used to back the buckets. When my mom used to wash, he used to fill up the bucket and my dad pour it in the bath pan. But growing up, we used to have stick house. I don't know, I don't know about stick house. We got a piece of stick and we jump on it now with it. We stick hearts. I went the real house come, I'm afraid for it. But growing up, we had stick hearts and we had stick sword. And we always wanted to be the king. We always wanted to be King Arthur. Because we wanted to be the one in control. We want to be the one who can tell the others what to do. If I should ask today, who was the first king of Israel? I guess most of us, you know, we think we know who it was or think along the same line. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, dear Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As was read earlier to us by Jonathan. You know that the people of Israel came to Samuel, was their prophet at the time. And they told Samuel, you know, you to get old, your son, they are not really following the way of the Lord, so they really can't take over from you to carry on. You know, we want a king. Just like the other nations. We want a king who will take care of us. Who, you know, will fight our battles for us. And this thing, you know, got under Samuel's skin. Because Samuel believed like, you know, that my son is supposed to be the one to take over. And those people are rejecting me. And God told Samuel, it is not you they have rejected but that they have rejected me as their king imagine that brother Ella Scott he started his uh, message Wednesday telling us about the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Deuteronomy is where the laws were listed for the children of Israel and if we look in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14 and 15, it tells us who should be a king in Israel. It says, when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you and have taken possession of it and settled in it, and you say, let us set a king over us like all the nations around us. Be sure to appoint over you 
a king the Lord your God chooses. He must be from among your fellow Israelites. Do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not an Israelite. Now, you see why Samuel is feeling kind of rejected? Because the people are telling him, we want a king. We want to choose who will be our king. And as I had asked, who was the first king of Israel? Many of us would say, Saul. We grew up in a Bible club. We hear the story of King Saul. But if we look back in the book of Judges, chapter 8, we read about this man called by the name of Gideon. You know, as we talk about Gideon, the first thing comes to my mind that Gideon and the 300 men, and they broke this pitcher and they blow the trumpet and they conquered the Midianites. Great leader. And in Judges chapter 8, the children of Israel came to Gideon. And they said to him, said, rule over us, you, your son, and your grandson, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. You see, Gideon knew what was in the laws. It's the Lord who's supposed to choose a king, not the people. And it goes on to tell us that Gideon had 70 sons. But he also had one with a concubine, a female slave. He was a non-Israelite. And he named this son Abimelech. Now, the name Abimelech means... My father is a king. So imagine if I'm a name Jonathan Abimelech. I don't a king. So yet still behind Gideon's mind, you know, he said, I can't be no king, but I must still name my son Abimelech. Because what? My father is a king. Now, Abimelech. You know, he tell the people, he say, we got 70 away. You guys want 70 away rule, you know, or just one man? You know, I'll be like me kind of, you know? And they say, yeah, we prefer one man. So Abimelech went and killed off all his brothers on one stone. Only one of them managed to get away. His name was Jotam. You could read up about it. It says, and in Judges chapter 9, it says, verse 6, it says, Then all the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo gathered beside the great tree at the pillar in Shechem and crowned Abimelech king. And in verse 22, it says that Abimelech reigned over Israel for three years. Now we see who was Israel's first king. However, he was not chosen of God. Now, was he a full Israelite? He was mixed race. So he did not fulfill the qualifications laid out by God in Deuteronomy chapter 17. You know, and many years later, the same thing happened again, as was read to us in the scripture reading from 1 Samuel. He said the leaders of Israel wanted a king, and they made the same mistake. God did not choose the king they wanted, even though he was a full Israelite. You know, when it spoke about Saul, it's when you read, it says Saul's head was above all the other head of the other guys around. Just imagine that. He looked down on everybody else. So, of course, this is the one where the Israelites don't want to be their king. 
But we read about Saul and being disobedient when the Lord tell him, go kill off all the Amorites and he saved the, the king Agag and he saved the nicest of the cattle and everything and he blamed the soldiers, oh that the soldiers didn't save it or oh we bring it back for serve offering. He was disobedient. And we read in 1 Samuel chapter 12, Saul was give, Samuel was giving them a farewell speech. And after this speech, Samuel never came into the presence of Saul again. 1 Samuel 12, verse 12 and 13, speaking to the Israelites. He said, but when you saw that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, was moving against you, you said to me, no, we want a king to rule over us even though the Lord your God was your king. No, here is the king you have chosen. Here is the king you have chosen. Think back again, Deuteronomy 17, what's supposed to be the qualifications of a king of Israel? It was not until David was chosen by God that Israel had their first truly real king based on Deuteronomy chapter 17. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 16, it says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I, or God, I, God, have chosen one of his sons to be king. See, God is telling Samuel, I know I'm choosing this one to be king. As we read on in verse 6, chapter 16, 1 Samuel. So when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Many times we like to choose things because of what we can see. But it comes down to what the Lord says. Verse 8, Then Jesse called, Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel but Samuel said the Lord has not chosen this one either Jesse then had Shammah pass by but Samuel said nor has the Lord chosen this one Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel but Samuel said to him what do you think Samuel said the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. No, I'm the oldest, I'm not the youngest. I can't fit David's position. <laughs> hey, this is how they brought in David. And it continues in verse 12 and says, Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. This is the one. God had chosen. You know, David reigned for 30 years. He was a great warrior. You know, always, while preparing this message, you know, I thought about little song. Saul has killed his thousand, but David tens of thousand. You know, we saw always sing that. You know, David was this great warrior. He was chosen of God. And even when we are reading about other kings that came after David. They always reflect back. You know, if the kings, they were doing the right thing, following God's command, they would always come back and say something like, 
He was following in the footsteps of his father, David. Realize that David was the one God had chosen. In 1 Kings 9, verse 4 and 5, he says, what? Spoken, speaking to Solomon, he said, as for you, if you walk before me faithfully with integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish, establish your royal throne over Israel forever. As I promised David your father when I said, you shall never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. Second Kings 22, speaking to King Josiah, about King Josiah, what did he say? He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. So you see, it keeps pointing us back to David as the one the Lord has chosen. You know, and God had chosen David, but it was pointing us to something farther down, to a greater king who was yet to come. And yet still, a lot of the Israelites, they were rejecting the one God chose. And many times, the Lord reminded the people of Israel through his prophets how they rejected him as their king. And in our night Bible reading, we read some of the prophets a couple of weeks ago. Hosea 13, verse 9 and 10. Hosea speaking to the Israelites, he says, You are destroyed, Israel, because you are against me, against your helper. Where is your king that he may save you? Where are your rulers in all your tongues of whom you said, Give me a king and a princess and a prince and princes? He's reminding them that it's not you who's supposed to be asking for this person who is going to be king. It is God supposed to be the one who chooses. In Amos 5, verse 25 and 26, again, speaking to them, he said, Did you bring me sacrifice and offerings 40 years in the desert, people of Israel? You have lifted up the shrine of your king, the pedestal of your idols, the star of your God, which you made for yourself. So we see that God had all this planned out. He chose David to be the king over Israel. And when we read these things, we're supposed to bear in mind not only that, but what was this pointing to? Which, who was the real king who was going to come? And you know, in our singing earlier, Song number two, first verse, the last two lines. No one is God and king, but Jesus alone. Song number three, third and fourth line. And bow down to worship you, Messiah, Christ, our king. See, when we read Matthew, chapter 1 and Luke chapter 8 it shows the descendants of Jesus Christ coming through David you see why the laws they were set out in Deuteronomy they were pointing out to Jesus Christ son of God who was this king to come Matthew 1 verse 1 says this is a list of the ancestors of Jesus Christ a descendant of who? a descendant of David the king that was chosen by God who was a descendant of Abraham. So throughout the Old Testament, it was pointing the kingship, the king who was to come, Jesus Christ, who was chosen by God. And you know, the people of Israel, many of them knew this, yet when Jesus came, they rejected him as king. As we are reading, Again, we're in night Bible reading, and please, guys, join one of them. We are reading the book of St. John. And John chapter 7, verse 42 says, They were speaking amongst themselves when Jesus was doing his miracles. 
He said, does not scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendant and from Bethlehem? Yet still many rejected Jesus as Messiah the King. We read the, first, the chapter just before that, John chapter 6. They said, but wait, who is this man here? They're not, they're not Joseph and Mary's son, the son of a carpenter. How this man will ever be the Messiah, the Christ, was supposed to come? But they had all these things in Scripture that they could have been following. And oh my. That happened, what, over 2,000 years ago? And even today, still happening. How many times we want to choose who our king is supposed to be? How many times we look to our jobs, we don't get the work late, when the boss asks if we do something, we say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. We make sure we get it done. But yet still when we read God's word and there is a command from the Lord, do we honor it? Are we obedient to it? Or we want to serve our spouse, our children. Yeah, people say, anything for my wife and my picnic, even if I have to dead for it. Are we willing to die for Christ, who is our real king? And oh my, this one. We even look to ourselves as, our, as we that the king. We depend on our own self. And when we fail, then we want to go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? What happened? What? Well, you know, say that to me, yeah? But we depend on our own self thinking, I got this. I can handle it. And I'm speaking for my own self. When I come to share, it's because it has touched me already. Many, many times, oh my goodness, we look for your vehicle right now. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, I go up a car fax and I look for this, as much mileage and all kind of damage and everything. And you know, thank God I have a God-fearing wife. She always say, relax, Fernando, relax. Just pray to God. He wants to send the right vehicle to you. So you know, a lot of times we rely on our own selves. Many times we don't look to God. Look to the one he has chosen to be our kings. To be our king, sorry. And today, just as in the days of the New Testament in John, we have the scriptures. Yet many are rejecting Christ as king. If you are here today and you have never met Christ as your king, Romans 6.23, verse that has been said over and over again. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. How? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the one. All we need to do is say simply what? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Yet many times, we try to do something to save ourselves. As was read in the scripture reading, 1 Samuel 8, this was what, verse 20. He said, The people said, What? We want a king with a king to lead us and go out before us and fight our battles. That is what we want as a king. That is what we're looking forward to. Someone who will be there to fight for us. Who are we putting our trust in? Proverbs 3, verse 5, and says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. <laughs> and this is the purpose, and this is the one, this is the part. Lean not on your own understanding. But what? In all your ways. Submit to him. Submit to the Lord Jesus. And he will make your path straight. And as I mentioned, the children of Israel, they wanted a king to fight their battles. And it's the same thing. We want someone to fight our battles. And this is where we come back again to the book of John that we are reading. John 16, verse 33. 
I have told you these things, Jesus speaking to his disciples. I have told you these things so that in me, in Christ Jesus, we may have peace. In this world, we will all have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, just thinking about that. You know, <laughs> some people like, how we never yet? Never yet. It's a God in action. The God cannot excuse. The God cannot say, Jesus. Remember when Jesus left, he left the Holy Spirit to guide us. But the Lord is calling us. We want to look, he wants us to look up to him as king in our life. We read all the nice songs just now. Number four, king of my life, I crown thee now. Have we done that? Have we crowned Christ as king over our life? You know, a lot of times I'm sure Christ is looking down on us, down on us going through difficult times and we refuse just to cry out to the king. We think we can manage it on our own. Let us today cry out to the Lord Jesus as our king. The one who from years ago the Lord has set before us to be our king. Who gave himself for us on the cross. Who took our place. And as we celebrated his death earlier in the first service, the Lord's Supper. The great work he did for us on the cross. That now we can be called his children. We are the children of this great king. Let's never forget about that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to us as our king. Lord, forgive us when we fail to recognize you and to come before you as our king. Lord, we may, may we put aside all the other factors, even ourselves, as we try to place it before you and we try to think that we got this and we can do it on our own. No, Lord. Help us to be thankful and to be grateful for you, for the work you have done on, on the cross for us. You, our great King and Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we rise? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, be honor and power and glory, now and forever. Amen. God bless you.